After 14 long months of speculation, it's finally official. Mercedes Monet is all elite. One of the most open secrets in the wrestling world of the last few months is no longer a secret. The arrival of Mercedes Monet to AEW has been a long time coming since her departure from WWE in May 2022, nearly two years ago. But as it turned out, the time just wasn't right for her to make the jump to AEW. However, she still took a major leap of faith by signing with New Japan Pro Wrestling in January 2023 in a bid to become the centerpiece of New Japan's newly established women's division while also wrestling for New Japan's sister promotion, Stardom. Things seemed to be going great with Mercedes becoming IWGP Women's Champion in her first ever match for the promotion, and although she eventually lost the title in only her second defense against Mayu Iwatani, Mercedes Monet seemed inspired and ready to take the world by storm with this run in Japan. However, things would unfortunately be cut short when Mercedes suffered an ankle injury in a match against AEW's Willow Nightingale that would crown the inaugural Strong Women's Champion. This is the very injury that has kept her out of action until now. And while Mercedes' run in Japan was ultimately cut short, she maintained that she'd be back to finish what she started. This posed a lot of questions regarding the ever unpredictable Mercedes Monet. When news broke that she had no contractual obligations left with New Japan, many people wondered where her landing spot would be. For a while, it seemed like AEW was the most likely choice, especially with her making an appearance at All In in Wembley Stadium last August. But then the rumor mill started saying she was heading back to WWE after failing to come to terms with AEW. And then one last plot twist took place when it was reported that talks had fallen through with WWE and that Mercedes Monet was all but guaranteed to sign with AEW. It feels like we've been stuck in this rumor limbo for years now because we literally have. But tonight, that's finally all come to an end. So what does this mean for AEW and their women's division which had already been building momentum for months up to this point? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about. This is by far the biggest signing that AEW has ever made in regards to the women's division. There's no more excuses. AEW has the pieces in place for a compelling women's division, but it's up to them to hold up their side of the bargain. Mercedes Monet caps off a once-in-a-lifetime type signing spree for AEW. The big three signings of 2024 consist of Will Ospreay, Kazuchika Okada, and now, of course, Mercedes Monet. I just called it once-in-a-lifetime, but the reality is this is the second time that Tony Khan has managed to sign three big names and debuting them weeks within of each other. In 2021, Tony Khan managed to sign CM Punk, Adam Cole, and Brian Danielson to cap off the best run in the company's history. Well, hindsight is 2020. Punk got fired and is now in WWE, while Adam Cole has suffered two long-term injuries which have kept him out of the ring for a significant amount of time. Brian Danielson, despite suffering injuries of his own, seems to be the one that AEW has gotten the most out of when it comes to the 2021 trio. But Brian is going part-time later this year, so he was always on borrowed time as well. What's my point? Barring any type of brawl out disaster, I truly believe that the 2024 trio can be more beneficial for AEW in the long run compared to their 2021 counterpart. I know what you're thinking, that's insane considering the 2021 trio are all collectively bigger names compared to the 2024 trio. But when it comes to fitting AEW's original vision that they set out to achieve in 2019, I don't think it gets any better than Osprey, Okada, and Monet. The signings from 2021 were just the cherry on top in a year where AEW was already on fire. In this case, AEW is looking to build momentum again as they go back to their roots which brought people to the dance in the first place. I can only speak for myself but when AEW first started, what I essentially wanted was New Japan in America. Obviously that type of style isn't feasible for a weekly TV show but so long as we got as close as possible, I was happy. In other words, I wanted a bigger emphasis on the actual wrestling, and for the most part that's what AEW has been. And what better way to continue that vision than signing arguably the two greatest in-ring male wrestlers in the world in Okada and Osprey, as well as one of the best in-ring women's wrestlers in the world in Mercedes Monet. I wanted to say this before I get into the singular importance of signing Mercedes Monet. In 2021, AEW was the hottest company in the world. In 2024, they're not. It's just the plain truth. But the fact that these big names are still willing to sign with them because they believe in what they represent, and let's face it, the money is good as well, is great for the health of professional wrestling. But it's up to AEW and their small creative team, which I'll get into later, to do right by these three signings. This could be the spark that AEW has been waiting for. Following one of the greatest pay-per-views I've ever seen by debuting Okada and Mercedes gives 2021 vibes. 
In a TV contract year, it was important for AEW to disrupt the wrestling world by luring in some big names. And out of all the names that have debuted this year, perhaps none are bigger than Mercedes Monet. For anyone who follows pro wrestling, Mercedes Monet needs no introduction. Formerly known as Sasha Banks in WWE, Monet built a resume that could go pound for pound against the very best the industry has ever seen, male or female. In my opinion, Mercedes Monet is arguably the greatest American women's professional wrestler of all time. I don't know if that's a controversial statement considering that the talent pool to choose from is pretty small due to women's wrestling only just recently being taken seriously, but I stand by it. Some of you might be thinking I'm only saying this because she just signed for AEW, but I've been a fan of Monet's work since her NXT run. In my opinion, she was always the best out of the four horsewomen, and it always blew my mind that WWE treated her like the least important one. And I'm sure someone is going to point to her being a six-time world champion on the main roster as a type of gotcha, but how many of those reigns were only a month long that were only used to put someone else over? I'll answer that question. Five of the six reigns were about a month long and ended up being used as a way for Monet to put over the person that WWE preferred over her at that moment. Five. That's embarrassing. At least her last world title run ended up being a few months long which culminated in a historic WrestleMania main event where Mercedes Monet and Bianca Belair became the first all African American main event in the show's history. That was a fantastic main event by the way. I remember watching Monet and Belair's match and thinking just how far ahead the WWE women's division was to AEW's up until that point. And it wasn't just this match either. At just the age of 23, Mercedes Monet would wrestle her best friend Bayley at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn in a match that's now widely considered one of the greatest women's wrestling matches in American history, and arguably ever. The signs were there early on that she had everything to become a major star within the wrestling industry. She had the in-ring skill, the look of a superstar, and the gimmick to go with it. The boss, as she called herself, took WWE by storm, becoming one of the most popular wrestlers on the roster, male or female. No matter who she was paired up with, be it Charlotte, Becky, or Alexa, she gave it her all. But as I said, WWE never fully backed her as the face of the division that she could have been and that led to frustrations. Not a lot of people seem to talk about this anymore, but Mercedes asked for her release in 2019 immediately following that year's WrestleMania after her and Bayley lost the tag team titles. She was eventually convinced to stay, and many would argue that this second run on the main roster is when she did her best work in WWE, outside of NXT of course. Many would also argue that Mercedes and Bayley were WWE's MVPs through the pandemic. Thankfully, Mercedes got a WrestleMania main event out of it. But she would find herself walking out of the company only one year after main eventing WrestleMania, alongside her tag team partner Naomi. We won't ever know what happened the day they walked out, but all reports were consistent in citing creative frustrations from Monet. And just like that, one of the biggest stars in WWE was gone. Mercedes would have to sit out the rest of the year before officially being granted her release at the start of 2023 by WWE. The wrestling world wondered what the former Sasha Banks would do next. Despite some teases from AEW, Monet decided to go a different route, and perhaps it turned out for the better in the long run. On January 4th, 2023, the former Sasha Banks would debut for New Japan Pro Wrestling under the name Mercedes Monet. She was no longer the boss, she was now the CEO. Debuting at New Japan's biggest show of the year was obviously a sign that New Japan thought highly of her. For fans of Japanese wrestling, this was a pipe dream come true. Not only was Mercedes going to spearhead New Japan's newfound women's division, but she was also going to compete for stardom as well. It's a shame this run got cut so short, but the small glimpse of what Mercedes could do outside of a WWE ring against some of the very best in the world is why so many people eagerly awaited her next move. During this run, Mercedes got to step in the ring with the likes of Kairi, Azumi, Mayu Iwatani, Stephanie Baker, and Willow Nightingale before suffering an ankle injury that required surgery. Since then, it's been nothing but speculation, with a few appearances here and there to troll the entire wrestling world. For a while, it really seemed like Mercedes was heading back to WWE, but that turned out to not be the case. Once word broke out that she had signed with AEW, the anticipation began to grow for the arrival of one of the greatest women's wrestlers in the world, and all the signs of her arrival were there too. Since AEW's inception, it seems like the women's division has always been a point of contention, for good reason. 
I myself called out the company many times on their booking of women to no avail, unfortunately. But at some point late last year, something changed. We started seeing a bigger effort to highlight the women's division. No longer was it just one segment and one match. It was multiple segments with the occasional second match. And then two women's matches became a permanent fixture on Collision. Women were finally cutting in-ring promos in front of the audience for the first time in forever. Former WWE writer Jennifer Pepperman, who was apparently Mercedes' favorite writer to work with in WWE, was hired by AEW. Investment from a free agency perspective was also happening. The arrivals of Mariah May and Deanna Perrazzo made it clear. Things were changing. And then it all made sense when the report of Mercedes' arrival dropped. This was the missing piece of the women's division. And please don't make me laugh by saying Soraya was the missing piece. To compare her and Mercedes on any wrestling level is unserious. Mercedes is the big established name that the women's division has long needed. I really think that had she came in back in January 2023 like many of us thought she would, she'd be walking into a women's division that was still an afterthought. But in 2024, that's no longer the case. Timing is everything here. Mercedes also brings a very passionate fan base with her too. Which reminds me, I forgot to mention that New Japan's Battle in the Valley sold out after Mercedes was announced for the card. It's unrealistic to expect this every week, but it's worth noting that she does bring out her fans to support her. And that's important for AEW. They're not just bringing in Mercedes Monet, they're bringing in the buzz. And with the returns of Britt Baker and more importantly, Jamie Hayter looming, it adds an excitement to the AEW women's division that we've not seen before. If this were 2021, I would have called this signing a game changer, but that was my mentality back then. Rather than a game changer, AEW needs consistency and people who believe in AEW. Mercedes is the last of three big signings who could have easily chosen to sign with the white hot WWE, but instead they're in AEW. Some people don't want to believe that it could have been for any other reason besides the money. Wrestlers have been underpaid for decades. Someone finally paying them what they're worth isn't a bad thing. It's the opposite. But it's also now up to AEW to continue what they've been doing all 2024, being the alternative. It's been a very long time since I've seen the AEW fanbase this collectively excited. The main event scene is on fire, the tag team division is starting to find its footing again, and now the women's division is being treated like a serious part of the company. Mercedes Monet selling as many tickets as she did for her debut in the TD Garden is yet another feather in her cap, and I can only hope that her arrival lives up to all the hype and potential that it has. The fact that Tony Khan went out and booked the whole arena for her debut in her hometown clearly shows that he thinks highly of her. In addition, the matches she'll have with Deeb, Riho, Mariah, Hayter, and so many others will solidify the AEW Women's Division as a place to be. Just imagine all in at Wembley Stadium with the entire roster healthy. I'll never flat out say it again because every time I do it seems like I curse it. But if you asked me if AEW is back, I wouldn't say no. The best part is that this is an AEW that feels like the one of old, yet still has an exciting newness to it. It truly is a new era, for the first time a women's pay-per-view main event feels possible. For the first time, the AEW women's division feels elite.